All right, we are back at it and we're going to tackle 8.4, the spread of communism around the world after 1900. Here's what you need to know. As a result of, of internal tensions and a civil war and Japanese aggression during World War II, uh, the Chinese communists led by Mao Zedong will seize power in 1949, making China a communist nation. And in that communist China, the government will control the national economy uh, through policies like the Great Leap Forward, often uh, implementing very repressive policies with negative repercussions for the Chinese population. So we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into communist China. In 1949, Chinese communists led by Mao Zedong, who you see pictured here, defeated the nationalists of Chiang Kai-shek in a long lasting Chinese civil war that actually dated back before World War II, took a bit of a hiatus during the Second World War, and then began again in 1945. By 1949, uh, the communists win and China becomes the People's Republic of China. Mao will quickly order the nationalization of Chinese industries, and he's going to adopt Soviet-style five-year plans to push for economic growth, especially industrial economic growth. And that brings us to 1958, where Mao will launch what's called the Great Leap Forward. It's an economic policy of land redistribution and collectivization meant to transform China into an industrial superpower. Um, Mao Zedong saw the, uh, the, the greatest um, evidence of a, of a state being an industrial powerful one was how much steel it could produce. And so Mao was going to utilize his greatest asset, that was his population, to start making steel. And so, so hundreds of thousands of backyard furnaces sprouted up in, in China where um, peasants would be taking time from their work on the fields to actually produce steel on those fields. Food production in the late 1950s, early 60s would plummet. Uh, though China, uh, trying to give the, uh, the appearance around the world of still being a successful economy, would continue to, um, to, to export grains to other nations, despite people in China starving. And when all was said and done, tens of millions of Chinese died uh, in that resulting famine following the Great Leap Forward. In 1966, Mao would launch what was known as the Cultural Revolution to eliminate critics of his regime, which there were a lot of after the Great Leap Forward, and to strengthen his hold on power. Mao's Red Guards, which were largely revolutionary students, seized government officials, teachers, um, and others to re-education camps to fall in line with Mao's leadership. Um, and when all was said and done, following the Cultural Revolution, hundreds of thousands um, were sent to these camps. Many were, were killed and became casualties of this Maoist policy. Now, we're going to also see movements in other parts of the world to redistribute land and resources uh, in places like Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Um, and in many cases, these, these uh, new states and leaders will advocate communism or socialism in their quest for land reform. Uh, we're going to look at Iran first. Uh, foreign powers have long exerted influence over the Iranian government. Uh, during World War II, Russia and Britain supported the, the rule of Shah Mohammad Pahlavi um, in, during the war in order to keep Iran from allying with the Nazis. Um, in 1951, Iran would uh, elect a, a new leader named Mohammad Mossadi um, as prime minister. And he vowed to nationalize the nation's oil industry. And if you are a, a Westerner, if you're a pro-American, pro-capitalist Westerner, this notion of nationalizing industry uh, sounds like communism and it makes you nervous. Um, and he um, would, uh, in, in 1953, the United States and Britain orchestrated a coup to overthrow um, Mohammed Mossadegh's government and return the Shah of Iran to power. Uh, this would lead to what was known as the White Revolution, um, where some progressive reforms were instituted, including a woman's right to vote and the creation of a social welfare system. But ultimately, um, ultimately, there uh, grew a movement in Iran, uh, largely because of repressive government policies against the people um, that would lead to a revolution in 1979. This Iranian revolution overthrew the Shah of Iran and established a theocratic government, uh, what we call today the Islamic Republic of Iran. 
uh, in Latin America. Land reform becomes the uh, goal of many Latin American countries in the post-war years. In Guatemala, for example, in the 1950s, a democratically elected government led by Jacobo Harbanes called for land reform and redistribution. Uh, if you recall, uh, we, we talked last unit about the banana republics, that economic imperialism where Western businesses owned a lot of the prime real estate and were, were exerting a lot of influence over Latin American governments. The United Fruit Company, for example, lobbied the U.S. government to get Arbanias out of power and the U.S. government responded as, as there was concerns about the spread of communism into Latin America. In Venezuela in, in 2001, the government ordered land redistribution and the seizure of privately owned properties. The nationalization of industry would follow with the leadership of Hugo Chavez. So this, uh, this idea of land reform and nationalization of industry stretched to many countries in Latin America in the post-war years. In Asia and Africa, we see some of the same. Communists in Vietnam would move to seize the land of large landowners. Following the defeat of the French and later the Americans, the communist leadership in Vietnam pushed their land reform policies on the entire nation, North and South, after that war. Attempts at economic and land reform happened in India following the independence from Britain in 1947. In Ethiopia, a military coup by Megitsu Haile Mariam in Ethiopia turned that country from a pro-Western state into a socialist state that began to receive aid from the Soviet Union. As they implemented land reform policies there, um, a disastrous famine would result. And in the 1980s, Ethiopia was, uh, was one of the most desperately hungry nations in the world. And it, we, we would see um, uh, food aid, live aid movements start in the West to try to give donations um, to the people of Ethiopia that were starving. So what do we wanna take from this? Following World War II, the communist victory of the Chinese in the Chinese Civil War ushered in an era of political and economic reforms that for many proved disastrous in China. Movements to redistribute land and resources occurred in many other states in the late 20th century with some mixed results. And governments are often operating in the shadow of the Cold War superpower who would act in some cases to support or oppose local policies um, that, were, that were occurring in these nations. We'll see you next time.